Hello, welcome to the New York School of Design Sewing Basics course. And once again, I'm Hannah. I'm gonna be instructing you during this course. And today we have a great video ahead. We're gonna learn the important preparation steps that come before we return to our sewing machines. So next to your sewing machine, you're probably gonna be using your iron almost as much. So keep it set up and handy, if at all possible, when you're working on a sewing project. You see, especially with woven fabrics, you're gonna be ironing seams open, seams closed. You want your fabric nice and crisp before you even work with it. I mean, there's just so many scenarios where you need to use your iron. So definitely keep it handy. As you can see, I have a nice large cutting mat, lots of room to cut out my fabric, which is key, and lay it nice and flat. And I have all the tools that I'll need for cutting handy, as well as this pattern piece. I chose a simple pattern piece for this first demonstration and cutting it out. We can read all of the instructions on the pattern piece. In this case, it says cut one lining and cut one self, but we're just gonna cut one piece of it right now. Self means the right side of your primary fabric. So we're going to pretend that this muslin is the primary fabric. You'll also know that there's an arrow on the pattern piece. That indicates the direction you should place on the pattern piece on the fabric in relation to the grain line on the fabric. Now you might ask, what is a grain line? That's a great question. Each woven fabric is woven together with two grain lines. There is the lengthwise grain line, which runs parallel to the selvage. That's the finished edge of the pattern, of the fabric. Then there's also the crosswise grain line, which runs perpendicular to the selvage. You'll find that the lengthwise grain line is slightly stronger than the crosswise grain line, meaning that there's just more stretch perpendicular to the selvage as there is parallel to it. You can test this out. The selvage is easy to locate because it's the edge of the fabric that does not fray. So I've located my selvage on this fabric and I've located the grain line arrow on my pattern piece. So that means I know now which direction I need to lay my pattern piece in order to make sure that the grain line is correct and the stretch is correct. So I'm going to lay it nice and flat down on my fabric making sure there's no folds or lumps hidden by the pattern piece on the fabric. And now it's time to pin our pattern piece to our fabric. So I take my pins. I like pins that have a nice ball head so I don't lose them. And I also like to use a magnetic pin cushion. That's my recommendation because personally I've dropped my pins too many times to count and a magnetic pin cushion makes it so much easier to get them. Anyways, I'm going to begin pinning my pattern piece to my fabric. I pin down through the pattern piece, through the fabric, and back up through the pattern. I'm going to do this every couple inches around the perimeter of the pattern. You'll find the more that you do this and pin and cut out patterns on fabric, the more comfortable you'll become with the number of pins that you use. I'm always trying to find the balance of just enough pins to use to hold the pattern in place, but also that there's not too many that I have a long time to pin them and take them out afterwards. So here I'm just placing one every couple inches around the perimeter, making sure that I'm catching the fabric every time I pin and not just the pattern. Okay, so now that I've pinned my pattern piece to my fabric, making sure that it's laying correctly according to the grain line, which I find by locating the selvage, it's time to begin to cut it out. I'm going to use my fabric scissors to cut out the pattern and the fabric. 
Now make sure when you have fabric scissors, in order to keep them using usable and working well for you for a really long time, to only ever use them for fabric. Okay, I've got my fabric scissors and I'm gonna cut around the perimeter of the pattern, doing my best to not cut into the pattern at all and only the fabric. Every pattern is a roadmap for your sewing project and you want to make sure that you follow all the markings on the pattern before you ever go to sew. On this pattern piece, there's a couple tiny short lines on the perimeter, at the top there and on the bottom. These are called notches. Notches are key markers on your patterns that will help you when you go to sew your pattern. A lot of times they're to indicate lining multiple pattern pieces up in the same location or to indicate front or back. There's a couple of different ways to transfer your notches to your fabric. The easiest and my personal favorite is to make a tiny snip with your fabric scissors. You don't want to be cutting into the seam allowance and you just need a tiny snip that's going to be visible on your fabric. So you, when you cut this snip, you just really need to make sure not to cut too far in, only enough that you can see. So I did that on the bottom here. And then I have the top part of the pattern piece. And I'm going to show you another way to mark the notch. Right here I have some fabric chalk, which you can wash off with water and is a very common marker. I'm going to flip my pattern piece over so my fabric's facing me and I'm just going to mark that notch with the fabric chalk. Some people prefer to do it this way instead of risking cutting into the fabric. It's totally your own preference. Either way the notches are marked and indicated. Here's one th third way to note your notches and other pattern markings on your fabric. This is a disappearing ink pen, which I personally love. Test it on an area of the fabric first before you use it on your primary fabric to make sure it works. But the beauty of a disappearing ink pen is that it will disappear totally in about 48 hours after you initially use it on fabric. So it's great for making markings that you need to be highly visible, but you don't want on your final garment. Okay. So that's one pattern piece, all cut out and marked. I'm gonna go ahead and take most of my pins out. I do like to leave one pin in with my patterns, pin to the fabric, and I also like to write on them the name of the pattern piece or the type of fabric that I have because I don't always trust my memory. Right, you want to leave yourself as many reminders as to what it specifically is before you go to sew to it. So in this case, I wrote self on it and I left one pin in, keeping the pattern piece with the fabric until I'm actually going to sew with it. Because a lot of times you'll be working with a lot of different pattern pieces and the easiest way to keep track and identify them is to keep the pattern piece with it. And that concludes video two of the Sewing Basics series. All right, now that we've learned how to correctly prepare fabric for sewing, next video, video three, we're gonna learn how to sew some tucks and darts. It's gonna be really fun to add some fullness and some interest to our garments. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.